everyone hello everyone uh, we are going to take this time to just look at the disgusting pictures i think daryl brooks's mother looks disgusting look at it look at it Ooh. does she look like a dinosaur <laughs> dude what is that on her face Ooh, she looks a hot man Oh my God! Today, he <laughs> said. <laughs> wow! Can you believe that these two people were in cahoots? They were working together, working together, trying to slither out of this, just like Daryl tried to slither away, like a scared chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all remember when Sue Harper said that? He was like a scared chicken. <laughs> oh, wow. Unbelievable. Of course, how can we forget? How can we forget the wicked grandmother of the West and the person of Mary Edwards? She's supposed to be a, some pastor. But you notice, and we'll go into it. You notice when she had given her remarks, the first thing she started talking about was really mental illness. That's what they were banking on. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen? I did my research that if this had a been a mental illness, Daryl Brooks could have gotten out of this and... All of these charges would have been taken completely off of his record. If, if this in fact was a mental illness. But as astute as Judge Dora was, <laughs> she brought in the experts to debunk their feeble attempt of mental illness. Yeah, look at look at that look on his face now. Uh-huh. He had all that mouth, y'all. <laughs> he doesn't look too happy now. He doesn't seem so jovial now. <laughs> yeah, your world came crashing down on you. <laughs> your world came crashing down on you, didn't it? Didn't it? Who has subject matter jurisdiction now? Who has subject matter jurisdiction now? Exactly. He looks beaten. He looks wounded. As well as you should, you fool. You made yourself look like an idiot. Across the board. A global pariah across the board. So let's listen to his wicked grandmother, the witch from the West. And her feeble attempt to try to save him concerning mental illness. Ridiculous. Uh, Mary Edwards, do you want to turn your camera on and unmute? And then Ms. Woods, if you yes, would. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Look at him. He knows his life is... His world is over. It's over, Daryl. What are you going to do, Daryl? Good afternoon. <laughs> and I should say for the record that uh, obviously Don Woods was the first speaker, and then I have Mary Edwards. If you can let me know who's next to you, please. Oh, there's no one next to me at the moment. Thank you. Okay. Are we good who's, to go? I need to know who's in the room with you. Right, she lied. Because I saw them. Oh, that, oh, that's my... Exactly, she lied. You see how it's good? See, they all liars. Daryl's a liar. The, his mother's a liar. And the grandmother's a liar. She knew somebody was in that room. A liar. And you know what? That's not a good look, especially when you're trying to save your grandson. <laughs> you know, and let me say this. The only reason why Judge Doro is allowing them to speak is because she has to follow that protocol. Because, you know, at the end of the day, and as we all know, this was a feeble attempt. It didn't work. So basically, the grandmother and his mother essentially wasted their breath. It was all vanity. It meant nothing. Just like with Daryl Brooks, argue subject matter jurisdiction. It had no, it was without merit. Come on. Husband. Okay. Okay. He's not in the room at the moment. Well, all right. 
That's he, okay. He's not here. I just wanted can, to know I saw some problem with him being here? Yes. No, he can be there since I know who it is. Oh. Um, we'll just... Oh, I just it's not my husband is here. Will he be okay. speaking or just you? No. No, he's not. Well, if he's not speaking, then what the hell is he doing there? Come on. Speaking. All right, go ahead. Thank you for being here today. And again, if I look like I'm uh, looking to the side, it's because that's where the monitor that I can see you okay. is located. So go thank, ahead. Thank you, Judge. For the record, uh, my name is Dr. Mary Darlene Edwards. Job, and I am not the wicked grandmother of the West. Yes, you are. I am the grandmother of Daryl Edward. No, you're a witch. You're the wicked witch of the West. You said it right the first time. <laughs> Brooks Jr. And I asked uh, to be here today for two reasons. Mm -hmm. First of all, from the bottom of my heart, please, I want to offer my sincere apologies to those who have been hurt so badly by what has happened here, this um, tragedy that has been caused by my grandson. I want to also apologize to the family of the little boy. I understand their name is Sparks. You know what, can I say this, and I don't mean to, 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 to be cutting off like this, but here's the point, I just think that that's BS. She's saying that she extends apologies. Well, if if they were really extending an apology, she wouldn't be lying, advocating mental illness to try to get him out of this. Why didn't she just say, you know, why did why, you know, they should have not even brought up mental illness because that was the cushion to handle that impact of that sentence that was coming down. If they were truly sorry. If this witch, excuse my language, if she was truly sorry. Why is she advocating mental illness? Come on. The experts already debunked that. So this is BS what she's saying. This is crap. To all of those whose lives have been damaged by Please. this overwhelming tragedy. Look at As a fool. minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I want to give the family and those who have been hurt so badly the scripture, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And I say this, please know that it's my prayer that my grandson will sincerely and humbly apologize and ask all of you and God for forgiveness. You know what? Well, let me say this. She shouldn't be reading scriptures to the family, talking about blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. She should have read the scripture to Daryl when the Bible says thou shalt not kill. She should be reading him the scripture. Since he had a book and nobody saw a page move, so apparently he wasn't reading it. Why don't you read a scripture to him? Ooh, don't get me started on this wicked witch of the West. Oh, I know that's right. <laughs> Goodness for this horrible, terrible deed. Some of you have said that you will never forgive him. Please do not be like the man who drank the poison and hoped his enemy would die. Oh, Unforgiveness is a terrible disease, just like mental illness is. See, that's BS. See, she's talking about mental illness. It ain't nobody, yo, we can see right through this. She's full of crap. Full of crap. How you gonna apologize and then try to make excuses? That oh my God. <laughs> These people are clowns. And I mean, and just the, the, just the temerity to think that this was going to work. Oh, 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 were they ever sadly mistaken? Truly, there have been many losses because of this tragedy. Daryl's mother has lost a son. I've lost a grandson. No, you lost an animal and good. He's locked up where he belongs. He's in a cage. You lost an animal, not a son. He's not a human. He's a mutant. Daryl Brooks is a mutant. He's not normal. Daryl's children have lost a father. 
They and lost an animal. lost his mind and his life in the outside world. Daryl's behavior, including his voice, should give the, get the attention of the powers that be, both near and far. Uh-huh. Oh, really? Daryl has uh, suffered from bipolar since the age of 12. Excuses. And it was that disorder that caused him to drive through that crowd. It is my prayer that <laughs> that's, he... That's BS. That, that's not what caused him to drive through there. It was his rage. It was his rage. How many times have we debunked? The judge debunked it. Okay. In the sentencing. Because she said that they tried to raise a feeble attempt. Meaning a impotent attempt. Using mental illness. And it was also debunked because Daryl knew exactly what he was doing. It wasn't mental illness that caused this. She's lying. You know what? It's like it's like she apologized to the family. Then she turned around and said, F you. F you in the sense that she's making excuses. What was the point of the apology? If you basically trying to get Daryl out of this. With your feeble attempt. Touch of David say it's not wise to trust a witch. I know that's right. <laughs> As a matter of fact, the Bible says suffer not a witch to live. So why didn't Daryl run her run her over then? <laughs> oh, be treated God. for this illness and managed <laughs> in a facility that addresses mental health concerns. This is we must start with a younger generation. Oh, please. Finally, I'm 80 years old. It ain't grown and up. And I have yet. been an ordained minister for the gospel of Jesus Christ. For 47 of these 80 years. And I wonder how much money she did made off the church, see? Because you know she all about money because she started plugging her book. Oh, ooh, hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. That's why I said I think she was probably the most intelligent out of the bunch. Because she was intelligent enough. Intelligent enough to use this platform to plug her book. Unbelievable. If you look at my background, you will see that God has used my life to bring about positive change in multitudes of residents in the city of Detroit and beyond. Well, apparently it didn't work with your animalistic grandson. How dare you? This woman needs to be ashamed of herself. I share this information not to boast. That is not my intention, but rather to let you know that I care about people and their well-being. B.S. I've spent more than half of my life helping what the Bible calls the least of these, a.k.a. society's rejects. Since this tragedy, I have become a mental health coach. This will help me better understand this horrible disease which has plagued my family for generations. Let me say this. Let me say this. Now, as the jury did not buy anything that Daryl Brooks was selling. All right. Y'all remember when he uh, uh, when he had approached the jury and he was giving his clothes and they didn't buy anything that he was saying. And as the jury didn't buy what he said. Judge Doro ain't buying this crap. Exactly. She's just letting this woman talk because of the protocol. This is just BS. Presently, there is a church in Detroit that is planning to establish a mental health clinic on the east side of Detroit. She about is still, wait a minute. She is still talking about mental health. Are you serious? <laughs> she is really going ham. Really to no avail because I, as I just indicated, Judge Duro is not buying this crap. <laughs> and I don't blame her as well as she shouldn't. Would you buy a piece of junk off the street? That's what Daryl is, junk. This whole fa their whole family is garbage. Garbage. Hesitation, I will support this effort and do everything I can to help those struggling with mental illness. Oh my God. Before I close, I just want to share with you some facts with regard 
to mental illness. And I got this from uh, the government's uh, mental health website. Oh, really? Oh, really? Well, guess what? Judge Duro brought in the, the experts, the experts that did an official evaluation of your animalistic animal. Wait a minute. Was that redundant animalistic animal? <laughs> that animalistic fool. So irrespective of what you got, we got the experts. And so we just debunk, debunked your BS about mental illness. That's, that is crazy that they actually tried to do this and thought that it was going to work. There's a myth that said mental health problems don't affect me. Many people don't feel like it affects them. That's a myth. It affects everyone. It's a common problem. In 2020, and listen to this, one in five American adults experience a mental health <laughs> issue. One in six young people experience a major depression episode. One in 20 Americans lived with a serious mental illness, such as schizophrenia, well, you know what? He wasn't mental enough to, to change his apparel and try to get out of there in a hurry, as Sue Opper referred to it, like a scared little chicken. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what happened to the mental illness? He do he do what he did, and he tried to get out of there. Come on, this has no bearing. And she, I guess what I guess she feel like she's moving the needle by reading something that she didn't found. Oh, please. <laughs> or disease or major depression. Suicide is a leasing, leading cause of death in the United States. Okay. Yeah. In fact, it was the second leading cause of death for people ages 10 to 24. It accounted for the loss of more than 45,979 Americans in 2020. That's nearly double the number of lives lost to homicide. As a result of this great tragedy, I'm dedicated to leading the next, living the next chapter of my life with a mental health awareness campaign. Good for you. I have faith to believe that God will hear the voices of all of those impacted by this horrible mm -hmm, disease, mm -hmm. as well as the cries of the mentally ill. Oh. This part of the sentencing, I just want everybody to look how impotent and empty and beaten and wounded and destroyed and decimated Daryl Brooks looks because he is at the behest of a woman that will make the final decision over his life. Oh, I love it. I love it because everything he said came back to bite him in his behind. Oh, yes. Oh, this is my feel good moment, y'all. <laughs> here. Here. For me to be okay. Because I haven't been for a long time. See, he only cares about himself. For him to be okay. Okay. He doesn't care about what he did. Just like when he did that heinous attack at the parade he got out of there with the intention of what protecting himself and he's doing the same thing as he is talking before he is getting ready to be sentenced he's trying to protect himself for him to be okay the hell with you you didn't kill six people what do you mean for you to be okay? Oh my God! I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired. Who cares? I'm tired. Who cares? Some days I don't know what what's up or down. Some days I I don't know. See, he's just saying that so that way that can further. If you notice, that's gearing to mental illness. He's basically trying to advocate that he has a mental illness, no different than his witch behind grandmother. With the same feeble attempt. I want to know. I didn't use the B word. I said which. It's <laughs> going on two hours. Right. Two hours. Two hours. It is all about him. And I can't believe the judge even let that happen. Two hours. 
I feel like we're starting to cover the same ground. Right, circular. Over and over. So I'm going to ask you again, because I'm really interested in your perspective. I want to know as I consider and contemplate and finalize what to do in this case, if there are any sentencing recommendations you have on your own behalf to make at this time. Notice she said finalize. See, see, see how that power went right back to her. I love this. Oh, he gonna get it. <laughs> look at it. Yeah, you beat. You look like a beaten, wounded animal. <laughs> I just want to be helped. Uh uh. We don't need to help you. You need a. You need a behind kicking. Nobody helping you. See, he trying to advocate mental illness. Nobody's stupid. But you, your grandmother, and your mother. Hurry up! I don't want to live with with inside this pain anymore. Oh, please. I, I, I know that's probably not the answer you're looking for. Um. You don't need to be living inside a society anymore. Okay? So you being in a cage did every the world a favor. <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> oh, I love this because he looks Your so Honor, beaten. And all that mouth he had during court. You ain't shit now, man. Excuse my language, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> I really. Well, Come on, get it out. Get it out. Get it out. Well, like Let me ask it this way, sir. Yeah, thank you. This is Six of these counts that you have been convicted of are intentional homicide charges. That's serious. The options for the court are very limited. Wow. Life without the possibility of extended supervision. Jesus. Life with the possibility of extended supervision as early as 20 years. That's the statute. My Lord. And third, anything in between. And then lastly, related to that, there's an enhancer. Even more of five years for each count based upon the jury answering that special verdict question, did wow. you commit the offense of intentional homicide by using a dangerous weapon? And he did. Thoughts on that? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, look at it. Look at it. <laughs> you have been convicted. Where is subject matter jurisdiction now? Uh -huh. I, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you think you should spend the rest of your life in prison without ever seeing? No, Your Honor. Somebody yelled out and said he should go to burn in hell, you piece of. I can't say it. But that's what he should. He should be burning in hell. Freedom outside bars. That would be extended supervision. Wow. Should these counts run consecutive or concurrent? Together. Meaning one after the other. Wow. Or serving them at the same time. Wow. What are your thoughts on those things? Yo, isn't that scary to, to 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 hear a judge like give you those options? Because both options are not good. <laughs> it's like he don't have a dog in the fight on this man. He is finished. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, oh. I didn't understand everything you said, but I did. Um, it don't even matter. Just go sit down. Go to your cell. <laughs> I can't live a million years. Well, that, that's the point. Basically, you're never coming out. Basically. So, so unless you're coming out in the body bag. <laughs> I can't wait to see that. I feel like. <laughs> um, Come on, I man. Should be able to go somewhere <laughs> where <laughs> I can be helped. No, no. I can be properly evaluated. No, you need to go somewhere where you can be, where you can rot. You will rot and rot. And right away. <laughs> Where I can be properly medicated. No. 
It's a feeble excuse. If that is an extended period of a long, long time. First of all, he's talking about something that's not. She gave him basically two of the options. And none of that, and like I said, none of that was good. So what is he talking about? Somewhere where he could be helped. <laughs> what? What? He said it in the trial. Earlier during the trial, he said, ain't nothing to benefit me. Exactly. These two options ain't going to benefit you. <laughs> At least I know that I'm getting what I need. No. Not, not what I want. What I need. You need prison. At least then <laughs> I would be able to say. Oh, please. Now he try to. He tried to get in good with the judge. Watch this. It's okay. <laughs> Ain't gonna work. You can be you. Y'all remember he said that on the show? Ain't gonna work. You can. Look like it's working now. <laughs> be grateful for the fact that. Oh, please. Judge, shut him up before he start talking another two hours. Nonsense. Sit down. You have experts. Or I, I don't know if that's the right word, but. Um, well, Tass Tackett wasn't the right word, and he was saying that all throughout the trial. You stupid fool! You you Woo! have people that <laughs> this know man. exactly what to do. That recognize exactly what needs to be done and what should be done. But they already did that. Didn't y'all hear her say? During the sentences that she had the experts come in and, and that had evaluated him. They watched his mannerism. They watched uh, when he was in the interrogation room, how he uh, spoke, how he acted in court. They saw all of that. So what is he talking about? The experts to see what they they already gave their assessment. Child, you a day late and a dollar short. Go to your cell where you belong. <laughs> oh. to be able to um, oh judge please throw a monkey like right I in said, it be properly uh, medicated no he, need, he needs his he needs to get a proper behind whooping somebody needs to properly whoop his behind which is <laughs> extremely needed I don't know if that. No, that's not going to work. Answers. No. I'll follow it up again. Do I? What I hear you saying, sir, is that you don't have a specific recommendation in terms of how long the sentences are, whether they're life, whether they're consecutive, whether they're concurrent. But you're exactly. That's what I said. She gave him basically. She wanted him to answer that, and he's talking about something else. Yeah, that has nothing to do. Relative to those recommendations of the sentence. And both of them are not good. He trying to take the easy way out. Nah, -uh, that wasn't on that option wasn't on the table. You're asking me to take into consideration your mental health needs and that's your crap. desire to get help. Uh uh. That that's Still crap. <laughs> yes. Of course of course he wants to get out of this. Of course. It's an excuse. And Judge Dora ain't buying that crap. I would say um, he don't need to say nothing else. You've been talking for two hours. Shut your mouth. And uh, hurry up. I think it should be uh, what you said. Um, <laughs> what, what was the term you used? Concurrent. The extended supervision term. Or consecutive versus concurrent. Yeah. The concurrent. Yep. Right. Serving sentences at the same time versus right. consecutive one after the other. That's in succession. Uh -huh. Just watch this. Just like he killed those people in succession. That's how he gonna serve it in succession. I know that's right. <laughs> yeah, I love this because he looks so broken. Broken now. Oh, this is this is one of you know, actually, I always say I like to watch the, the verdicts. But you know what? I really like this because you can see visibly 
where this man is beaten. He's he's through. He's through. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Serving it all together. Um. <laughs> Those are the two options. What is your recommendation? My main thing <laughs> is, you know. Shut up. Like I said, re re regardless, is he ain't even saying nothing. And they had to listen to two hours to of this crap. Just be put placed somewhere and just forgotten about. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? I think that's a good deal for you to be placed somewhere and to rot and to be forgotten about and away from society. Because you're a mutant. That doesn't help. And mutants don't belong in society. That helps. That helps society. Honestly, I don't. He said that ain't going to help. That helps society. At least. At no. Um. At least we know. At least we know that he can no longer hurt anybody. So that does help. How that all works. Um, but. Um, <laughs> all right, Judge, you need to cut this off. He's 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 he's. This I know that <laughs> it would greatly benefit me to be able to be somewhere where. Nothing needs to benefit him. How do like, wait, 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 audience. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How can you kill six people in succession, all right, injure all these people, and then now you want to be benefited? Like, the, how does that even make sense? That don't even go together. That is absolutely unrelated. That, <laughs> to benefit him? What? Oh, my God. How can he have such the gall to say that? The temerity. <laughs> The nerve. Um, Jesus. Like I said, I can properly. Um, you notice he keeps going back to being helped and all that. And those were not the two options that were is what that had anything to do with the sentencing recommendation. See, he's he's now he's gone off on something else. He can't stay on task. We're not talking about anything to benefit you. This is a judgment against you. Not benefits for you. What do you not understand? Evaluated and medicated with the things that I need. It prison. Prison will be your medication. That's the medication. It could be something that I haven't even discovered yet, or not me myself, but it could be something that maybe way near that could have helped me years ago that I probably wouldn't never have known up until this point that could have immensely helped. Me. All right. Once again, he's talking about being helped. Um, and that's that's that's. That's no different than what his grandmom was advocating, mental illness. That's no different than what his mother was advocating. BS. Now, I want to go into a part of the trial where the judge actually gives her sentence. There's something in that sentence that I want you all to all hear, and I want to point it out, and I want to elaborate on it. All right, all right. So now we are at a phase where Judge Doro is giving her sentencing remarks. And I want you to see once she starts talking concerning Erica and how she showed courage, you can see Brooks, he started, he's, he's not liking that. He's not liking that. Oh, come on, come on in. Watch this. By the way, she showed grace and dignity facing you. Absolutely. A man who clearly has no regard for her as a mother of one of your children as someone you had a, a domestic partnership with and a relationship with at one point. 
that's not true. We shut up. No. And I would say this goes to your character. How you gonna how you gonna say that ain't true? He didn't have any regard for her. If he tried to run her over, he tried to kill her. His daughter's mom. That means he doesn't have any regard. He didn't have any regard for those people that he killed at the Waukesha parade. How can he say that that is not true? What was shown through that altercation and going up the hill, following her, slapping her, you know, the rules don't matter to you. Not the rules of the road, not the rules established by court orders, not the rules even of decorum and decency. And I'll get to this more fully when I talk about your character. And I know you went hard at Attorney Opper for her bringing these things up, but those are legitimate, lawful. It's lawful law, Daryl. Y'all hear, hear what she said? Lawful. It's lawful law. <laughs> Sentencing considerations and when i get to that point i'll tell you the case law that supports that your character your even your pending cases pending that is ain't that crazy like he got pending stuff on top of all this this is he is it is like he's super finished <laughs> oh yes i love this we know at the time of all of this right you were out on bond for two felony cases one involving a handgun one involving the same vehicle and Erica Patterson and one involving ultimately intimidation of Ms. Patterson. He is we bad. Know Look at it. That, you, <laughs> that on November 20th, and she was very contrite about this. Remorseful. She told you where she was. She, she invited you out there. And that you had contact with her on the 20th. There was some physical. Shut up. Mr. Brooks, this is my time. You need to not interrupt. Shut your mouth. The charge was dropped. Mr. Brooks. The state. You need to stop. Said specifically, wrote you, your honor, and said that they know it was no incident that day. Get him out. Get him out. Mr. And Brooks, now you want to sit up here. Do not interrupt me you, or you will be removed to and, the other And now you room. want to sit up here. Get him out. Stop. And try to now. And try to add something in that you know for a fact never even happened. Get him out. You want to sit up Mr. here and Brooks, talk about every who time. has grace and all this. You're talking about someone with five kids that don't have custody. You need to stop right now. You ain't got custody of them either. So how the hell are you going to talk about her? Watch this. Let me say this. Now, if you notice, and I don't mean yet. See, this This is what, see, this is making me mad. Let me calm down. But let me say this. The reason why he is doing this, because y'all remember when, and I had just, you'll see it in the video, when he was at, and I said it, when he was advocating, when his grandmother advocated mental illness, okay, and then he talked about that he needed to be medicated and all that. Well, I think the reason why he's acting out on this not only because she is basically favoring erica in this by saying that she's showing she showed courage and she did to face him to face this this man that tried to kill her but i think one of the reasons why he's doing that because what he advocated in terms of his needs was debunked she debunked that in the sentence because she talked about the experts that came in so he didn't have a chance so he knew he was going down. But the bad thing about this is that he exacerbated it by interrupting her during the sentence. That's going to make it worse. It's going to even be more. Oh, he's a fool. Or you will be removed. Remove me then. <laughs> All right. He will be removed. He cannot simply stay quiet I don't consent when this to court talks. Sentence. Anyway, I don't consent to this. It don't matter that you don't consent. You're going to jail irrespectively. Regardless of what, if you consent or not, he think because he he don't consent that that's supposed to thwart and stop everything. Just like I told you, shut I your mouth. The, Get out of the courtroom. I don't even the understand the, the Get the out. Get this animal out. Nasty thing. He's disgusting. And all he did, y'all. All he did was make it absolutely worst because she has the final say and boy did she throw some libraries not a book she threw a library at him let's go on to the next
And so this is where Mr. Brooks tries to delay the sentencing by wanting to come back in the courtroom. Let's dive in. She was so taken aback by the conduct of Mr. Brooks that she frankly called him out on it yesterday because he was kind of motioning his hand like, okay, come on, let's get this over with, hurry up. You notice he's trying to hold that paper up. He, he, he's trying to thwart the sentence. He wants to come back in to be disruptful again to try to stop what's happening. And the judge really didn't have to have him come back in there, and I don't know why. I don't know why. Given the multiplicity of his disruptions throughout this entire tribunal and now the sentencing, come on, come on, enough is enough. She yelled at him, you don't care. She goes, you hit me, I saw you, you knew. You're a child killer, you're a woman killer. And he's a child molester. She was so flustered, she had to really gather herself before she could continue. So again, I wanna thank the victims. I have other statements that I've read for people. Um, so gracious, I think they were all members of the Catholic communities. Their statements were translated. Very gracious. Praying some, for. And unfortunately, some of them didn't even want to come to court because they were that devastated by what he did. They didn't even want to come. So this is, oh my God. Mr. Brooks. Don't let him back in that courtroom, please. So I just wanted you all to know that I've taken all of these statements in a consideration uh, today. I can't read your sign, Mr. Brooks. Can you hold it up closer? Who cares what his sign says? Just if it's go a on pledge that you... Just go on with your sentence. The hell with him. Well, not interrupt me. I will bring you in for what will be the final section of my remarks today in the sentencing portion. See, he knows that. He knows it's going to be the final. That's why he want to come in there and try to stop it. <laughs> this dude is crazy. <laughs> I think you should give him that opportunity before you go through the fat, the uh, I'll do that. sentencing factors. And I can only read the top where it says objection, but so it was the prosecution's idea for him to come back in there. Maybe they probably knew he was going to yeah, be a fool in there, right? To further, to further enhance, or not enhance, but to further drill that coffin, drill that nail in that coffin. The further. Thank you, Step. Maybe that was a good idea. Because that's exactly what happened. He was thrown out again. I can't tell what it is, what it says. He can bring the sign with. We'll clear the courtroom. We'll take a short break. And I will bring him back in. But I will warn you, Mr. Brooks, that there is one interruption. You will go back to that room because you will forfeit your right to be present for the sentencing portion. We'll be in recess until we can get him back in. Thank you. All right, so she she's going to bring him back in. Y'all already know what's going down. We are back in. Let's get back into this trial as Mr. Brooks is making his way back into the courtroom. The records should reflect that uh, it's 4.53. Mr. Brooks is back in this courtroom. Mr. Brooks, the only way I will honor that request is if you specifically uh, waive your right to do so. <laughs> Without that, um, that's not a convenience for you over there. It's you go over there when you frankly demand removal under Illinois versus Allen. Didn't demand anything. Uh -huh. No, your conduct did. Here we go. So you My can conduct sit. Conduct didn't demand anything either. All right, right, Mr. Brooks, you please sit changing. down. You keep changing. And I'm the going to continue with my sentencing remarks. Can you believe he's still talking about jurisdiction? <laughs> he's, about to, he's already done. He's already finished. <laughs> You keep changing the jurisdiction. <laughs> jurisdiction is a subject matter of jurisdiction that has yet to be proven on the record. I don't get it, y'all. Mr. That Brooks, court and in this one. please sit down. I would like to go back to the other court. It's not a courtesy to you. If you'd like to specifically waive your right to be physically present, then I will entertain that. Otherwise, never, you need to sit down. I never waived. I never waived the right to not be present. That's because you to, forfeited your right I to be present by anything, conduct. Your Honor, You're now wrote, back in this courtroom. Your Honor, I wrote three. I did what you asked me to do. You, you said, never once pledged to me, sir, that no. you would not interrupt. See, all, all this could have been avoided had she would have just left him over there. All right. Now, I know some of y'all may say, oh, well, he probably the, the appeal court, the appellate court would have probably said something about that. I, what? There was too many. All right. Let me ask you this. How many times was he thrown out of court because of this? 
because of this. This thing, watch this. This ain't even the trial no more. This is sentencing. So he did this incessantly during the trial. Now she's trying to give a sentence. The only way that she can give a proper sentence without any interruptions is with him not in the courtroom. So, again, she should have left him over there. In my opinion, because look what's happening. Look what's happening. He knows that this is the final section. He knows that clock is winding down. And he knows he has but a short time. I know that's right. And so he's he's bringing great wrath in that courtroom because he is aware that his time is short. I know that. <laughs> and you're demonstrating by being here that you continue to interrupt. Man, I ain't trying to hear all that because at the end of the day, get him out, you judge. Me to do. You told me, you told the bailiff to tell Mr. me. Mr. Brooks, this is not a debate. You told the bailiff to tell it's me that I had to write. It's not a debate. You asked to come over here, and I honored that, well, I, and I, I brought you back. I exercised my right three times. I shouldn't have had to do it three times. None of those opportunities that you wrote to me said, I pledge to not interrupt. I've never had before. to do that before. He's lying. You've never, you've never required lie. that before. That is actually not true, sir. You've never required that before. Every single time that I've been brought over there, after some time, <laughs> sometimes very short, sometimes an extended Brooks, period of time. You are just simply trying to delay the inevitable. I'm, I'm, Please exactly. sit down. I don't care about the inevitable. Well, that's why she should have left him over there if she knew that he was trying to delay the inevitable. Again, he knew that it was over. She should have left him. And I bet you probably the state probably regretted, you know, asking the judge to give him an opportunity. Or maybe they, they knew he was going to do this and that would further be the uh, uh the ha uh, the, the drill the hammer that would that would be the final hammer in that coffin i don't know but but when don't you think they tired of this because he did this all throughout the trial uh, it was already written from day one what hearing. was going to happen that it doesn't make me lose any sleep about that <laughs> i know i'm okay <laughs> I'm okay with everything. Then please I just sit down. Be, He's okay with 7,000 years, y'all. <laughs> I just want to be treated fairly, which please, I have not been. Please sit down. And then you, Your Honor, and then you Mr. always make it seem this is like, not you a always debate. make it seem like it's some type of aim. Judge, just get him not. out. Please sit down. We're talking about constitutional rights. You just told oh me, my God. you told the bailiff to tell me Good that Lord. I had to write to exercise a right that I should already have. I did that. Not once, not twice, three times. This is totally irrelevant. That don't even matter. It don't matter. We are at the sentencing phase at this point. Judge Doro, invoke your powers. You run the courtroom. Get rid of this animal. You've given him opportunity after opportunity. And he exhausted all of them. He should not be allowed to come back in the courtroom. And it still wasn't honored. And then I, I raised this sign. This is crazy. I'm, I'm waving this for like 20 minutes you're, saying I would, want, I would want to come back. I'm doing this. You're hey, here now. Can I come back? Can I come back? Can so I come sit back? Down. It wasn't honored. And then I had so I, I said, okay, finish. I'll write this. Judge Doyle, stop saying sit down. He's not going to sit down. Just have him removed. What the hell? And I'll see if your honor can see it on the screen. The objection sign this saying, is, I've Brooks, exercised my right to be stop present. If you stop for a May minute, he's not I'll going to. explain it, but you have to stop I'm, so I'm I can explain my, it. Your honor, you've never, I did he's what you asked to me to do. Actually, why, why would she expect him to stop, given that he knows that this is the final section of the sentencing? He knows that it's over. He's not going to stop. He's not. He's trying to stop what you're doing. By doing this, this can easily be handled if you remove it. That's just like if I had a bunch of garbage in my house. If I no longer want to smell the garbage, what do I do? I remove the garbage. What am I saying? Judge Doro, remove this garbage. 
Remove this garbage now. Cat. Yes. Let me explain and, and if, if I you did, would like. If I didn't, Your Honor, if I did not oh my do what God. you asked me to do, then why did I? Why was I allowed to come back if I did not do what you asked me because to do? That don't I'm even matter. I'm going to a very distinct portion of this hearing where I am going to impose sentence. Okay, that doesn't answer the question, though. That doesn't answer the question. See, he's trying he's to, you know, he's trying to keep it going. And, and this, this is what pisses me off with Doro. She keeps going down that tangent and she doesn't have to do that. She keeps going down the rabbit hole with him. She already knows what he was trying to do. Simply trying to delay the inevitable. All right, so remove him. Down, and I will explain. It ain't that much protocol in the world. Touch a neighbor and say the hell with all this protocol. Plain and Your remain Honor, quiet with without due, interrupting me. With all due respect. That you know, doesn't mean you're respecting me, so please sit down. <laughs> How can he have a nerve to even use the word respect? What? <laughs> oh my God. Respect. You told the bailiff. Now, shut when up. I first said. Because every time that I've been brought over there in the past, this is Mr. Brooks, you always stated, I don't need a history you always lesson stated of what I've done. That when I exercise my right to be present, untrue. You untrue. always said untrue. why you is have she, the record. Why she go back and forth with him? I don't understand this. I really don't. I don't. I don't. We have the record. We can dig into the record. You, you're not going to. You, you're not going to solve anything by going back and forth with him. Because he's going to keep going round and around and around. That's Daryl. That's what he does. Remove the garbage so you don't have to st smell that funk. He did complain about not having a shower, so you know he was funky then. Get that garbage out the courtroom. Brooks? I, I, know, what you, I know what the requirement was of me going, in, uh, going over there. You've always stated on the record that when I exercise... My right to be present, you will bring me back if I'm if uh, I will follow the rules of decorum. That's it. Your this is a waste of time. Which you said every time. Which you're I've demonstrating never, right now that had, you have absolutely Your Honor, Your Honor, no ability to do. With all due respect, I've never had to go oh through my any God. type of certain words that needed to be oh. needed to be said or stressed or anything like that before. I've always done it the way that you've asked me to do it. All right, shut what up. I did today. When I told the bailiff I would like to be present, you told the bailiff. Why is she even entertaining this? He should have been gone like 10 minutes ago. Or never even brought back. How about that? If he wants to be present, he has to put it in writing. And pledge to me it, that he will in, not interrupt me. I put it He's in not writing going to do that. Without a pledge. So, so why am I here? Dow, get sh judge. Just get him out. Because I'm going to move on to another phase of this hearing, and I thought it important that you be here in person. So, watch this. so I was here, but you didn't reclaim see? your right to be back. Here. Watch, watch. He try to come up with something else. Watch. Here, then why am I, I here? I am then, Your Honor. allowing it to okay. happen. Okay, and and I, and I and I respect that you're allowing it, but still, it, it doesn't answer the question, though, Your Honor. It does. His question doesn't matter. He should be shutting the hell up. He's not even supposed to be talking during the during her sentencing phase. So again, how is she's not even Oh. He's not even supposed to be talking. He already didn't talk for 2 hours. It's the judge's turn. Again, why is she entertaining this? Does not answer the question. Mr. Brooks. A, Your Honor, as a public Mr. Brooks. servant, this is I have crap. the right to ask questions Sir, of your honor. I'm going to ask you one more time. And if you refuse to sit down, then you are in direct disobedience of a. He been in di he's been in direct disobedience. Come on. Are you late? <laughs> he didn't just start. Court order. Sit that down and be quiet so I can make the appropriate can record. You, can you tell me what the um, oh. right, order He's is. not going to obey. He's yeah, get not forfeiting his right to be present. Get that garbage out. Get it out. It, I, I smell it. It stinks. He will go into the I other court. I didn't say I wasn't going to obey. It don't he matter. Get out. Until he's order. there. I just asked what is Get the your order. nasty I, I, funky behind out. Get out of the courtroom. I can't stand him. Ooh, I'm sorry, y'all. All right, listen. I, I. 
Thank you. Please be seated. She should have left him over there a long time ago because that didn't make no sense that she had to keep uh, 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 clearing the courtroom. The people had to. She was doing that during the tribunal. The jurors had to keep clearing out, being excused. The whole courtroom had to transition out. Back and forth, back and forth. That's ridiculous and or gratuitous. Of course, I do need to first verify that they can hear and see us. I'm getting the thumbs up. We are back on the record. The record should reflect that Mr. Brooks is no longer in the main courtroom. He is in the adjoining courtroom. That's where he belonged and should have stayed. Um, I, of course, have been erring on the side of constitutional caution, but I would note that his right to be present at sentencing is a statutory right. Um, which yeah, but if he's violating that by dis being disruptive, by delaying the inevitable, by doing this incessantly, invariably, then he's exhausted his constitutional right. So he needs to remain over there. Frankly, I probably don't need to go through the findings under Illinois versus Allen, um, but I did. Um, but under whether it's a statutory right or a constitutional right, you can forfeit that right and his behavior. Exactly. Forfeit, meaning he, he exhausted it. He been exhausted it. She just gave him, you know, a, a gratuitous leeway uncalled for. Here today has certainly demonstrated that he has forfeited his right to be present in this courtroom uh, during my sentencing remarks. He immediately came in. Um, I was on the bench looking through my paperwork. Uh, the courtroom wasn't even open. Judge Doro is basically talking to her boss. She's letting her boss know what's going on. <laughs> the Court of Appeals. I know that's right. Listen, y'all, I want you to comment, like, share. Uh, and subscribe if you haven't. Leave a comment. I love reading your comments every time I upload a video of this fool. Uh, let me know what you guys think. We've covered uh, his grandmother, the Wicked Witch of the West, um, uh, advocating her feeble attempt of advocation of mental illness, and that went in the tank because it was debunked by uh, the experts that Judge Dora had come in. And that's why I believe I said this earlier in the trial. I believe that Daryl Brooks was doing this because he was upset. He knew that, that basically every avenue that he tried to go down, it was thwarted. It was blocked off. He had nowhere to go. He was trapped. He was trapped. He couldn't he couldn't go to the left. He couldn't go to the right. There was no place else for Daryl Brooks to do. And so he tried a desperate attempt to try to delay the sentencing, as we just witnessed. He tried to delay the inevitable because he knew that that was finality. And the reason why I say finality, we know the Court of Appeals is really finality. Judge Doro's interlocutory. But I really believe that this is finality, given that Judge Doro told Everything that he did on that record, which absolutely decimated the very likelihood of an appeal. Please like, share. Thank you for listening.